What's the most uncomfortable question you can ask someone? Hey, uh, can we have a talk about your search history? Yeah, I hope nobody asks me that. Otherwise, it's over for me. It's done. Where's my hug? It's the creepy guy. Uh. Do you have a sister by chance? And why do you need to know? How come I wasn't invited? Yeah, that does kind of put people in an awkward spot. Oh, have you seen our toothbrush? No, and I don't want to, actually. <laughs> why are you so quiet? Look, sometimes you just don't need to say anything. I don't I don't have a need to speak, except for right now, I guess. Once, back in college, when meeting my then-girlfriend's parents for the first time, her dad greets me with a handshake. Nothing odd about that at all. Then, in mid-shake, he says, So you're the guy f***ing my daughter. I was genuinely rendered speechless. Hey, dads, stop being weird. St knock it off. Are we still friends? While it's still uncomfortable, it might be a necessary question sometimes. Times. Hello and welcome everybody back to Ask MK. My name's Brandon and today we're gonna look at some more questions, so let's jump in. What's the most badass thing you've accidentally said in the heat of the moment? I am a fourth grade teacher and one day I was up at the board and struggling to remember how to spell a particular word. I was trying to make light of it, telling the kids that sometimes adults need help with spelling too. One student replied, it is because you were poorly educated, but don't worry, we are poorly educated too. Double whammy. Yikes, getting burned that hard by your own students? Oof. At work, project manager undercut and mismanaged a project so badly, they pushed getting minimum viable product out with the goal to roll out improvements later. Product released, they all patted themselves on the back and moved on. Then that minimum viable product broke. In a meeting we had with our directors about how it's so broken and the cost to fix it, etc., no cost too big, unlimited manpower, etc., I asked, how come we couldn't afford to do it right, but we can afford to do it twice? Ooh, that had to feel good. Getting to tell your boss, yeah, why are we just making things wrong? I'll never forget the moment a family walked into the local pub I work at while I was working. This big king of the grill, bald alpha patriarch dad type and his wife and kids came through. I said, welcome, where would you like to sit? And he snapped back, well, a table would be nice. And without missing a beat at all, I replied, actually, we usually sit on the chairs here. I'll never forget the satisfaction of that moment or the look on his face. <laughs> my uncles were b***ing about my dad, so I walked into the conversation and told them it wasn't polite to talk about people behind their backs. My uncle turned to me and said I shouldn't interrupt when the men are speaking, and completely out of character, I replied, I don't see any men in here. Boy, did I get some s*** that day, but that's how I knew I won that exchange. Working retail, a Karen once told me she hoped I'd die. I was so into work mode that I blankly responded, I mean, we all die. That's it's not much of a threat. Maybe it was my lack of intimidation or blank stare, but that really shut her up. On that note, we should really normalize letting customer service workers, you know, yell back at customers. High school teachers of Reddit, what is the one thing that you want your students to know that you'd never tell them in person? I think what you learn in the other classes is mostly useless rubbish. The things you're supposed to do to learn it is boring and ineffective, and the way our schools are organized is archaic and not fit for humans, much less kids. Your parents are literally the worst part of my job. Yes, I put you in a group with the kid you have a crush on intentionally. I'm stuck here with you 180 days a year. I want to see some drama. Stop wearing your furry tail. Everyone is uncomfortable. I'm no longer a teacher, but I remember several days that I felt lazy and wanted to give the class the day off. I never did because I knew the teacher's pet would rat me out. Sometimes even the teachers don't like the teacher's pet. I'd let you get away with so much more if you were actually a decent person who treated others with kindness and respect. A-holes rarely get the benefit of the doubt or indifference. You accidentally put in an hour more community service than needed. Now you have to do one hour of community disservice. What do you do? Go around and turn off the automatic doors at grocery stores. It's easier than you think. That makes me wonder what they do in their free time. Out of order signs on all public bathrooms. You know you only try to use them because it's an emergency. Spend an hour going to gas stations and putting bags on handles. Now nobody knows what works and what doesn't. You know, I can't say for sure, but I feel like somebody did that last time I tried getting gas. I'ma go flex tape some parked cars together. Why are you punishing these people? They'll never get their cars unstuck. Stand at a crosswalk for a busy intersection and yell at open car windows that they have a flat. I guess that one sounds kinda good, but they are lying. Breaking leaf bags and spreading them back on people's yards. Alright, honey, go get the leaf blower. Or 
No, a rake is not gonna fix this one. What are red flags in a friendship most people brush away? I mean, first of all, that Robin guy won't leave me alone. He's always calling me up trying to kiss me, and I... Like, I'm, it, I love the guy, but come on. When you hang out with them, it feels like you're diffusing a bomb when there's nothing going on right then. Friends that only care to talk about their own success and aren't genuinely happy for you and yours unless it amounts to less than their own. Really jealous and possessive friends. I'm a jealous person by nature, and even though my jealousy flares up when I see my friends hanging out with other people, I would never let them know. Why? Because I don't want them to feel bad about doing the things they love, e.g. having a social life outside my little world. Continually feeling like you want to say something but should hold your tongue. You see you got a private message from them and your gut reaction is to start getting nervous or anxious. What is it this time? Friends who gossip excessively. If they're talking about other people, chances are they're talking about you. What was the highest waste of money that you don't regret? Just shy of $20,000 to go to Antarctica traveling solo, small cruise ship. More than I've spent on every other vacation I've taken combined. Was one of the best trips of my life. It also gave me enough space and clarity to realize how toxic my ex was to me so that I could find the strength to leave not long after I got back. I'll always want to go back to Antarctica. The inner peace I found there changed my life. My litter robot. Yes, I spent $600 on a cat shitter, but my house never smells. I don't have to scoop litter, and I only have to empty the drawer once a week. Definitely worth it to me. My fiance and I dropped close to three grand on a kitchen table and coffee table from Carolina Game Tables, the kind where you take the top off and have a board game space underneath. They're comparatively plain compared to some you see online. No lights or USB ports, no cubbies, drawers, or cup holders, just really solidly built solid wood tables where the top comes off. But hot damn, they've been awesome. We use them all the time. One unexpected use was Legos. I got a Lego set and started building it on the coffee table, and when I needed to stop for the night, I just put the lid on until I was ready to continue. Don't regret a cent. I spent too much money on a big treadmill for a very very small apartment, but I've ran 15 to 25 kilometers on it every week for the past several years, and it's been incredibly helpful both physically and mentally. Artwork. Can I always afford it? No, but my walls are full of original, 90% local art. They make me happy to look at, and I'm sure I made the artist happy too. Board games. They are expensive, but they bring me joy. And it's the little things in life, really. You die, and the first thing you see in the afterlife are three buttons. Next level, spectate and restart. Which one do you press and why? I would install a mod to play as Luigi. If you can't come back and play as Luigi, then what has been the point? Spectate. I would love to be able to see in depth how other people live their lives because it's essentially living another life as you can follow anyone around as much as you want while not actually having to go through the negative aspects of said life. No button to send me back to the main menu and switch some settings around? Damn, all these people saying next level. That's one hell of a gamble here. No new game plus? I want to keep my gear and experience. If I could restart knowing what I knew then, then restart. If not, then next level. Would you take a 50-50 chance at $5 million or death? Why or why not? I would, definitely. I'm already guaranteed death, but no way do I realistically have a shot at $5 million. Let it ride, baby. Is the death painless? If so, yes. If we're speaking about a painless, instant death, it's a win-win scenario. I'll be rich or I'll receive a better death than my natural one. Question. How fast would I die if I lost? Would it be instant or would I have to contemplate my mortality before it happened? I love how you can see the difference of people who answer here. No, I'm worth more than five million or I love my family too much to risk it. Then you go to the people like, Fuck yeah, death! Yeah! Imagine that I do not accept and the next day I get hit by a car. I am invalid and my bill is $5 million. Alright buddy, no need to be so pessimistic about this. What's the most effed up thing someone has told you about themselves after barely getting to know them? Visited a coffee shop for the first time on holiday. Barista commented on my tattoos. I said thank you. She told me she's not allowed to get tattoos, but she cuts herself to enjoy the pain and that's nearly the same thing. I found a different coffee shop for the rest of my holiday. Good God! Don't do that! Chatted with a huge middle-aged dude in a bar once who, after about two minutes, told me that he had been in prison for bashing his dad's head in with a hammer.
hammer. His dad used to beat his mom, and one day he had enough of it. Uh, yeah, that's a little uncomfy, but I guess good on him? I made the unfortunate mistake of inviting my old neighbor over when we were having a party. He had like five gins in my kitchen and confessed to an unsolved murder in Nunavut, Canada. He's in jail. Wow, way to be a snitch. I guess I shouldn't say that about a murderer, huh? <laughs> Moved to a neighborhood not too long ago, first person I meet was an older woman in her 50s. She told me all about her drug use and how sometimes she ended up outside naked and asked if I would help her back inside and put clothes on her. This was all in five minutes of saying hello. Bartender for a while. I'm here to meet a man to cheat on my husband with. Once me and my friend met a dude at a party and his icebreaker was, crack prices in the Bronx are up lately. I, I guess he's keeping up on his knowledge, I don't know. What was a huge trend that everyone forgot about. Flash mobs. Maybe. I don't know. Do people still do that? That era during the 2000s slash early 2010s when every popular song got an Alvin and the Chipmunks cover. Still can't believe we survived that. Farmville. All of my aunts let their young children create Facebook accounts just so they could send themselves gifts through them. My Facebook feed used to be full of pictures of everyone's farms. The California raisins were freaking huge for about a year like 1988 or 1989. I heard it through the grapevine, as performed by the Raisins, was on the radio, and Hardee's did a promotional thing with their kids' meals where you got these cool little figurines of the members playing their respective instruments. I had quite a few of them. In the 1950s, there was a fad that was teens seeing how many of themselves they could stuff into a phone booth. So I guess lockers were just practice at the time. When I started college in the mid-2000s, almost everyone had a Blackberry, the Crackberry era. We'd be messaging each other on BBM all the time and all that jazz. By senior year, those phones weren't even a passing thought on our minds. It's impressive how quickly it changed. Jelly shoes. Using 20 to 30 tiny butterfly clips to accent hairstyles. Those little clips did nothing but become hazards once dropped on the floor. Waterbeds. Watching media from the 80s and you'd think they were in every home. What do you think is scarier? The idea that we are alone in the universe or the idea that we aren't? Why? I think about the ruins of ancient civilizations on other planets and how absolutely fascinating it would be to explore them. That we are alone. Given how massive the universe is in space and time and the idea that Earth is the only place where any life form exists is unsettling. Everyone seems to be assuming that other life means humanoid or intelligent. To me, it just means any life form. Carbon-based or made of elements unknown to our galaxy. There has to be something else. Well, the idea that we will never know. There are lots of paradoxes and problems regarding aliens. If they are there at all, have they developed technology advanced enough to create electromagnetic signals? And if yes, why we haven't seen any signs throughout the visible universe? Our civilization can be easily spotted for everyone in a 110 light year radius with radio telescopes, and we cannot spot anything in billions of light years around? The idea that we're alone, because it would imply that our existence is winning the astronomical lottery and this is all we're trying to do with it. The idea we aren't, because anytime two entities come into contact, there is some kind of power struggle, and the loser is either subjugated or eliminated. The only chance for peace is a coincidental situation where both parties are at the same power, roughly speaking, to where the struggle is known to be too damaging to all parties such that it should be avoided. Mathematically, there should be life. I think it would be far more frightening that we are alone. What are some psychology experiments with interesting results. White rats and black rats were raised separately without seeing each other. When a black rat was placed in the white rat's cage, the other rats ostracized him. When white and black rats are raised together and a new black rat is placed in a cage, the white rats accept him. So basically, rats are racist, unless raised to accept differences. Not entirely sure it fits into the category, but the Rosenhan experiment. 13 people feigned mental illness to get into mental hospitals and all were admitted with different diagnosis. They then assumed their normal personalities, but to be released, they all had to admit they were mentally ill. There was a second part where a hospital challenged Rosenhan to send multiple fake patients to the hospital, and they would rate their patients on a scale of whether they think they were faking. They identified many possible fakers, but Rosenhan, in fact, 
hadn't sent anyone. The Monopoly study by Paul Piff. He basically brought two strangers into the lab together and had them play a game of Monopoly together. He randomly assigned one participant to start the game with twice as much money than the other, and that participant also got to roll both dice to get around the board, i.e. the other participant started with half the money and could only roll one dice. At the end of the game, when he asked the participant who started with more money why he won the game, they would chalk it up to their excellent strategy and gamesmanship rather than the fact that they had started the game with way more resources. It says a lot about how we deal with being born into a privileged state. I'm a huge fan of Milgram's Small World Experiment. It is more sociology than psychology, but I still think it's really cool. Milgram sends out 160 letters containing the name and address of a stockbroker in Boston to people in Omaha, Nebraska. They had to send it to someone they thought would get the letter closer, but they couldn't mail it directly to the stockbroker. Interestingly, most people that sent on the letter sent it on to the same group of people on the fifth degree. It only took six people, hence the six degrees of separation, to arrive on average. It shows how interconnected our world is, even before the internet, which is happy to think about. Reconsolidation. When you retrieve a memory from your long-term memory, it is susceptible to being manipulated. This can lead to memories being totally changed from the source. This is why eyewitness accounts cannot be fully seen as true. This knowledge is also being used to help people with PTSD by changing the negative memories they have of their particular trauma. What was normal to have in 2010, but not 2020? Shake weights. Ah, uh, but it feels so good when, when, you're, when you're pumping it and then it shoots the cooling liquid at you. It's so cool. Boots with the fur. But did she get low? Cell phones with a physical keyboard. Burn CDs that you wrote on top of. Rage comics. Those ones I think are still around, they've just evolved. 1,000 bitcoins. God, to be a man with a thousand bitcoins right now. Things with mustaches on them. I remember I had a pair of shades that had mustaches on them and I thought they were so pimpin'. Also galaxy theme everything. What's an unfun fact? In 2014, the CDC once found a smallpox sample that they had lost and didn't even know it. It was just laying around in some random storeroom. Oh, that, that makes me feel safe. Around 1.5 million people die from TB annually, which is a disease consistently treatable by antibiotics in almost all cases. Fatal familial insomnia exists. It's a rare incurable prionic brain disease that progressively destroys your brain's ability to sleep. Eventually, you stop sleeping altogether, go insane, have seizures, and die. When your skin becomes red from spending too much time under the sunlight, it's basically because your skin cells are committing suicide to avoid becoming cancerous. Depends on what you find as fun, but King Henry VIII exploded in his coffin while the grave was being dug. The mess was cleared up by stray dogs. Only one in every thousand sea turtles born ever make it to adulthood. Dead people can get goosebumps. Well, of course. Of course, I'm sure all dead people love R.L. Stein. Scallops have eyes, around 200 under the shelly lip. Oh, I've seen a picture of it. It's kind of creepy. Girls with super long acrylic nails. How do you wipe your butt without hurting yourself? Same way they put contacts in. Very carefully with the pads of the finger rather than the nails. I find the most difficult part is flushing the toilet if it's a push button. I don't get acrylics anymore, but when I did, man, the finger yoga I had to pull off just to get enough down force to push it all the way. You use the three seashells, duh. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Take some toilet paper, wrap it perpendicular to your fingers, covering up the nails. Wipe like normal. It's weird, but you can do basically anything but rock climbing. What is the strangest mystery that is still unsolved? The lost A-bomb off the coast of America, which the US government said not to worry about in the 50s and tried to cover up, was dumped in the ocean in an aviation accident and it's still lost to this day. 100 times more powerful than what we dropped in Japan. Oh, I love how lazy our government is. An unsolved murder of an entire family in Japan, which to this day remains unsolved despite DNA evidence indicating the ancestry of the killer, a sand sample left by the killer, which was traced back to the California desert near Edwards Air Force Base, and even sesame seeds in the killer's stool. Nah, but it couldn't be him. This dude got lost in the catacombs and they found camera footage of his journey, but at some point he drops the camera and just starts to run. As far as I know, nobody is found out WT 
TF happened to him. Perhaps not the absolute strangest, but in March of 2020, the Windows market share for the long discontinued Windows XP skyrocketed by about 10% in China. This spike in Windows XP use for just one month is for unknown reasons. Some people think the Chinese government could have been looking for security flaws in the operating system to take advantage of. After all, lots of sensitive government equipment still runs on Windows XP. How are we letting that slide? Like, come on. Three lighthouse workers with impeccable mustaches traveled to a remote island on December 7, 1900 for a lighthouse shift that should have lasted for two weeks. When a boat arrived to pick them up, they were gone. No trace of the bodies, and the lighthouse was strangely locked. Not only was the setting normal, meal ready to be served, but there was no fire in the fireplace and the clock stopped. One of the men kept a log in a diary, and he said that the seas were rough one day, but when monitored, it was actually calm. No one knows what what happened to them. One of them boys must have been caught sparring with a gull. And that is the end of my very funny lighthouse reference. How a lower class English woman became an important Egyptian scholar based on her memories from her supposed past life as an ancient Egyptian priestess. She actually described a garden in an ancient temple that was later discovered matching her description and in the location she said it was. She knew things that hadn't been published before and had been worshiping ancient Egyptian gods from the age of three. People who are stopped at a red light for one minute, but creep forward a few feet every 10 seconds. Why? I'm actually guilty of this a little bit. I once saw a guy creep through the entire red light. At no point did he just decide to go. He just kept on creeping until he was on the other side to wait faster. It's like pressing the button harder for a more powerful attack because the person in front of me did it. That's a valid answer. Child sleeping in car must not stop motion. Some stoplights have a camera sensor or an in-road sensor to detect if there is a car. By creeping forward, the hope is that you activate the sensor, which will trigger the light to change. The radio station is like 60 miles away. Sometimes when I stop, it's stuck on static. I have to creep forward to find it again. Who uses the radio still? Sometimes I look for an angle at which I can see the signal on the corresponding lights to anticipate when I'll need to get into gear. I just want to run over the guy who stopped me. Parents of identical twins or triplets. How sure are you that you never accidentally switch them around and raise them under the wrong names? If you raise them under the wrong names, is it still the wrong name? I used to babysit these twins. Their mom always dressed them in the exact same outfit except for the color of their socks. Well, when they were one years old, they loved taking their shoes and socks off. I mixed them up plenty of times. Oh no. Parent of twins here. When they were first born in the hospital, literally a few hours old, they were in little cots. Their name tags above their heads. Someone opened a door too fast and the breeze knocked both tags to the ground. I picked the tags up and couldn't remember which one was which, so just guessed. No one else needs to know, especially not their mother. I could always tell them apart. My wife had to hold them separately a couple times to figure it out. One of them came out with really spiky hair, so it was pretty obvious which was which. 100%. Hospital gave us labeled wristbands, so we just kept them on for the first few days. We also didn't share clothing or anything like that between them, so there was pretty much always a distinct way to tell which was which. My parents kept our baby bracelets on for weeks after we came home. I was baby A, and my sis was baby B. Although last year, I did get in a friendly argument with my mom when she thought I was born second. Had to get my birth certificate to remind her that I'm the older sister by 58 seconds. I got pulled out of the C-section first. Father of triplets. I honestly just took my wife's word for it for the first six months or so. Kept one in the attic and fed it only fish heads. Oh my god. Literally straight into incubators from an emergency C-section. Then one of them had surgery very early on and had a decently sized scar. Very easy way to tell me apart from my twin. I have a distinct birthmark on my hip and I'm slightly shorter. He has a boobs. I had identical twins in my primary one to primary three classes. Didn't take long to be able to tell them apart. Years later, I met one. Didn't know which. What awesome holiday gift did you get someone that you can't tell them about yet but want to brag about? I'm giving a very talented boy a full year's worth of free piano lessons and all the sheet music he needs. He's eager to learn, but his parents can't afford the lessons. I got my wife an expensive purse she thinks she missed out on. A local store has had it in stock for a long time and she fawns over it every time we walk by. But recently she went ballistic when she found out it's sold because the color and style is discontinued. I'm the one that bought it. My mom's coming from the west coast to visit me in Vermont for the first time. What she doesn't know is that I'm meeting her at the airport and we're going to Ireland which is her bucket list destination. At Thanksgiving my mom was complaining about how little dexterity she has with her oven mitts on. So I got her some grill gloves with individual fingers and they're machine washable. Lately I've been planning to pay for my neighbor's son's college tuition. Put in words, they aren't financially well. Boy had been studying on scholarships and loans. The boy is a good kid, but missed his scholarship due to some health issues, so he had to drop this year. I would be breaking this to him this Christmas. Can't wait to see his face. My wife is an insomniac and doesn't get to sleep until 3 a.m. some nights. She will lie there for hours and just can't nod off. I've got her a weighted blanket, which is said to help people with anxiety and also insomnia. My kid loves Harry Potter and super loves her guinea pigs. Yesterday, she said, my Patronus is a guinea pig. I had already got a 
hoodie wrapped up and hidden with that exact phrase printed on it. That's really cute. That's really cute. My young son loves Lift the Flat books. Obsessively loves them. We've already checked out every single one at every library in our city. So I handmade him one with him as the main superhero and his dad as his superhero in training. Just gathered a ton of really funny pictures of them and made a whole story with tons of Lift the Flap surprises, including his dog sidekick. I can't wait until he sees it. My sister is away teaching English in another country. Her pet cockatiel sadly passed away this year. I got her a small geometric cockatiel charm and a gold chain necklace. I bought it in August and it is my favorite gift this year. I got my boyfriend of day. I came really close to telling him yesterday because I'm so excited for him as pooping is one of his favorite things to do. To each their own, I guess. <laughs> Designed and custom printed my best friend a sweatshirt. She's obsessed with sweatshirts right now. With art of her favorite characters from her favorite book. She's talked about wanting something from her book basically every day this month and, lament <clears throat> and lamented that they don't make merchandise. But I can't say anything about it yet. I symbolically adopted a sloth through WWF in my best friend's name, her favorite animal. It comes with a little stuffed sloth in the mail and an adoption certificate. Of all movie opening scenes, which ones sold the entire film? The opening robbery scene in The Dark Knight. The Matrix opening with Trinity was filmed with the entire original budget to convince the studio that they weren't f***ing around. I think the opening scene, first chapter of Inglorious Bastards, sets up the villain, Hans Landa, perfectly. American Psycho. I remember listening to him list out every single thing he does to groom himself in the morning and I thought, what a psycho. Then thought, oh, I get it. Jurassic Park. Really sets the tone for the movie and the foreshadowing gives you a creepy feeling leading up to the storm. Jaws. You never see the shark in the first attack. Just the knowledge that there's something under the water. Brilliant. Goodfellas. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Scream has an incredible opening scene. The THX intro. The Matrix. I thought Trinity was the villain. Monty Python in the Holy Grail. Are you suggesting coconuts migrate? Raiders of the Lost Ark. All the parts from opening to the point where Indy runs and meets the escape airplane. Spaceballs! I love this movie! That ship going by for five minutes or more had me rolling and I never stopped laughing throughout that entire film. Such a good movie. If you haven't seen Spaceballs, go watch Spaceballs. It's so good. Pulp Fiction. I was 14 when I saw it and the opening scene just completely blew me away. I don't trust this guy's opinion. What movie is the best antidepressant? Cool Runnings. Never heard of it. Hercules always puts me in a good mood. What we do in the shadows. Galaxy Quest or Tommy Boy. Ratatouille. Spirited Away feels like therapy in a good way. It really does. It really does. It's one of my, it's my favorite animated movie. Spirited Away is. Princess Bride. Pirates of the Caribbean. The first movie. The gods must be crazy. Trust me, it's a little obscure, but if you look hard enough, you just might find it. Airplane. A Knight's Tale. It's absolutely amazing and full of so much fun and good times while still being really good. Enchanted. Watching the, how do you know that you love her? Musical number. Outdoors in Central Park. Puts me in an elated mood every time I watch it. I'm careful not to watch Enchanted that often just so it never loses that effect on me. Shrek or Shrek 2. Tropic Thunder. Can't be sad watching Tom Cruise and Robert Downey Jr. on that one. Which video game franchise should be revived? Battle for Middle Earth. Command and Conquer, but not with a mobile game. SSX. So many hours lost on SSX 3. Sounds like sex. <laughs> Legacy of Kane or Soul Reaver. The storytelling was on another level. Time Splitters. Splinter Cell. Portal. Knights of the Old Republic. Although I believe there is a remake coming soon. I still have fond memories of Jet Set Radio Future. I'd love to see a revival. Silent Hill. Dark Cloud. Way ahead of its time. Legend of Dragoon in the Chrono Trigger series. Sly Cooper. Mercenaries. Love the mechanics of those games. Army of Two. We need more couch co-op games. Golden Sun. Yeah, yeah. Those games are all great, but you know what they need to revive? They need to bring back Freddy Fish. Best game of all time. We need remakes. We need sequels. Come on. All you can eat buffet workers. What are your horror stories? College friend worked at a Chinese buffet. He said they caught a regular dipping his pizza in the wonton soup bowl, like in the queue and not at his table and eating it. Bite, dip, bite, dip, bite, dip. Ew. After a fourth time in a month, he did it. Management finally kicked him out. I had a coworker that briefly managed a Ryan's buffet. He said that it was fairly common for people to gorge themselves, then purge in the restroom and start eating again so they could get their money's worth. What the f***? That's so gross. There was a fairly expensive restaurant in Dallas in the 80s called Southern Kitchen. About 25 per person back then with food served to the table. Really good stuff. They were famous for cinnamon rolls. The owner said he'd seen many, many women ruin expensive purses hiding these rolls. I was once at an old country buffet waiting patiently to get some mac and cheese. Kid in front of me piled his plate high and then started tapping the serving spoon to get all the cheesy goodness free from the confines of the spoon. Once he was satisfied with his handiwork, he licked the spoon clean. I didn't have any mac and cheese and haven't been back since. That's f***ing gross. Went as a customer to a golden corral. I'm walking to the chalk fountain and three little girls step in front of me and now three of them just go hands deep in the fountain. The family was the first table by the fountain and all they did was laugh about how cute it was. Employees turned it off immediately. Buffet where I live got shut down for serving coyote meat and labeling it as other meats. What? Coyote meat? Not a worker, but I went to hometown buffet and the kid in front of me was slightly shorter than the buffet bar but had his hands in the 
the yellow jello, just massaging it. And his mom came by and snatched him away, but didn't say anything. Well, a guy came and made himself a bowl of jello. Ten year old me was too appalled to say anything. I haven't eaten jello since then. Not a worker, but I once saw a grown man have a childlike meltdown over the fact that he showed up to soup plantation too late and missed out on the biscuits and gravy. A professor of my college microbiology class was also a director at the state health department in charge of inspecting restaurants. The first thing she told us on day one was never ever eat at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Not an employee or a customer, but we had a Chinese buffet shut down for a health code violation, which was an employee was cutting veggies while taking a shit. To this day, I still wonder if that means dude brought a bucket into the kitchen or veggies into the shitter, and I honestly don't know which is worse. At the Frying Dutchman, a customer nearly bankrupted them. The owner called him a remorseless eating machine. If there was a zombie apocalypse, what do you think will ask Reddit questions be like? People who hide their bite. Why? What's the most wholesome experience you've had with a zombie? Where were you the day it started? What's something good that you think will come after this thing? Your username is now your survival tactic. How dead are you? Redditors who have had to kill an infected loved one. How do you cope with the guilt? <laughs> <laughs> Humans of Reddit who have had sex with a zombie. What was it like? How is zombie on human sex different to human on human? Can I get pregnant from a zombie? Zombies of Reddit. Why? Uninfected people of Reddit. Would you let a zombie bite your significant other, ex, sibling, parent for three billion? Why? People of Reddit. You're locked in a room with three zombies for one hour. How do you survive? What can I feed the 27 zombies I've been keeping in my basement? Girls of Reddit. What's the most low effort thing a zombie could do to get your attention? How do I train my plants to fight zombies? What's a modern day scam? that's become so normalized and we don't realize it's a scam anymore. Not being able to cancel a subscription online. I can subscribe in five minutes, but I need to call your service agents and I'm forced to be rude to them to cancel it because as long as my voice sounds friendly, they try to resell the damn subscription. Service charge for buying cinema tickets online. I've got to pay you to buy something from you? Buying tech devices for premium prices, then still having to pay subscriptions to make them actually do what they're supposed to do. Everything is a sneaky small monthly subscription. Charging a convenience fee for paying rent online. F you. It's more convenient for you too, bitch. Where's my convenience fee? Medical insurance not covering dental or vision. Like, it's all connected, guys. If you have badly abscessed tooth, you're likely going to need medical care. Even if you have dental that covers the extraction or root canal or whatever. Resort fees at hotels. Corporate home buying on a massive scale. They pay more than asking price because when they do, the higher price will increase the value of other homes they own. The system wasn't set up this way, and they're a position to do some serious damage to the economy. Transaction fees when using online banking. I do all of the work filling out the form so a bank employee doesn't have to, yet I get charged the same. Nobody else mentioned it so far. Printer cartridges. Raise the price of a product the day before they go on sales so that people think they are getting it at a discount. Not Americans. What is the best American food? Cajun food. Definitely the most unique American food. Hold pork. Luckily, a couple places make it here too. Hold pork burger. Pizza. Hold pork filled grapes. Coleslaw. I miss strawberry Twizzlers. I can't buy it here, unfortunately, and strawberry Pop-Tarts too. Strawberry Pop-Tarts are mid at best. Brown sugar cinnamon ones are the best. Curly fries. Recently came across Carl's Jr. for the first time in Istanbul, and curly fries were just the best. I hate to sound like an ignorant foreigner, but a made-from-scratch mac and cheese with at least three different cheeses, plus a crispy breadcrumb crust on top is one of my favorite American dishes. I want to thank you all for barbecue and fried chicken. I love American breakfast food. Honestly, I think they have breakfast down pat, but holy crap, what I really appreciate are pizza rolls. God bless the Americans for pizza rolls. Eggs Benedict are apparently an American invention. This is probably a recipe for disaster, but I'm British and a growing up visiting Florida, I would love eating raw cookie dough from the refrigerator section. As a Nigerian, one would expect my favorite food to be, I don't know, jollof rice or swallow. But no, it's fries. I absolutely love them. They're my all-time favorite food. I can't get any burger or chicken without fries, and I can eat as many of them as possible. I can't find someone who's listed it. So banana pudding! That shit is life-changing! It's true, banana pudding is really good. From a Scottish friend of mine, chicken fried steak with biscuits and gravy. What improved your life so much you wish you did it sooner? I need to pay attention to this one. I stopped living my my life just waiting for the weekend. When you work five days a week and you just have two off, it's not good to be always waiting for those two days. You can plan something meaningful or fun every day, even if it's just a small thing. Flossing. Actually, I use a water pig now. Now my hygiene and cleaning visits are a breeze and I haven't had a cavity in years. Learn Spanish. Now I have a lot of amazing Latino friends and get a lot of great gigs and opportunities because of it. Got a divorce. Not everyone can afford this, but moving closer to work. My commute went from 45 miserable minutes in traffic, glaring in hatred at the taillights in front of me, to a pleasant 15 minute bike ride. I got an hour of free time every day and better help. Got a proper diagnosis. I think a lot of people that for years question themselves, what's wrong with me? When they finally got diagnosed, it's a big relief and changes a lot in a better way. To talk about my depression, don't be too afraid to seek for help. Bachelor degree at 47 years old, master degree at 50. Doubled my salary in four years, from just getting by to on track for retiring at 60. Exercise every day. Anxiety and depression are much easier to
to manage, and I got some confidence I haven't had in years. Low impact cardio. Fuck, I love to run, but it destroyed my legs. I can swim my little heart out. Smile. Quitting drinking is the best thing I've ever done for my mental and physical health, and it's done nothing but improve my relationships. The last year and a half have been the best I've ever had. Learning to set boundaries and say no. If having sex on a plane is joining the Mile High Club, what would be the correct term people that have sex in a porta potty at a festival or a concert? Rock bottom. The blue poo screw crew. The vile tri club. Skeptic tank. <laughs> Skeptic skanks. The all time low club. If she's good looking, she's a porta hottie. Pile high club. Disgusting. Taking a dip in the blue lagoon. Porta pounders. The vile Y club. You're stuck for 24 hours in the last video game you played. What will you be doing during this time? What was the last video game I played? Stardew Valley was the last video game I played. I guess I'm farming. Searching for Majora's Mask, but not actually accomplishing anything. Swimming in a pool without a ladder. Trying to fucking survive. I'm in the forest. Building a factory. I was playing Satisfactory. President of the United Nations of Earth. I hope I can keep the Prothorin Scourge at bay. Try not to die on the rim. Was just waiting upstairs for 24 hours with some snacks and soda. It's Project Zomboid. Trying to avoid getting killed by Agent 47. Subnautica. I'd just chill in the life pod. Maybe go for a light dip. But I'm pretty sure I can't break rocks with my fists or catch fish by hand. If I had a sea moth, totally different story. I'd slam into a rock because I was going too fast and die for sure. Loitering in Balmora. I guess not scoring any goals in Rocket League in person. Catching Pokemon. Fucking terrified. I don't want to be in Destiny 2. I'd probably get raided by some unnamed fallen or sucked into hell by some random eyes spell. Getting verbally abused by children on Summoner's Rift. What can a dollar get you in your country? Thumbs up from the homeless person on the subway. I would just say, I would say just about anything at the Dollar Tree, but they just raised all their prices to a dollar twenty-five. Four ramen packs. Quick 30 seconds of being jostled around on the cheap Elmo ride at the mall. Individually wrapped little candies from a gas station counter. Not a candy bar. It's not enough. But mints or a lollipop maybe. Two tacos or a can of beer. Three fourths of a chocolate bar. Shout out to my boys at Arizona. Sweet tea. Keep it in that 99 cents since day one. A two liter of cheap soda. Four cheap croissants. No, I'm not French. A 500 milliliter bottle of soda. Almost enough money for two. A good quality chocolate. Eight gums. A four ice creams if they're cheap, but good quality. Up to eight if they're bad quality and so on. Where the hell are you from? A weird look at the cash register. Rent on a shopping trolley. What are some very comforting facts? The vast majority of people with a first time seizure will never have another seizure again and will not need lifelong anti-seizure medication. Everybody gets one freebie. The North Pacific humpback whale population is estimated to be 15 times greater than it was 60 years ago. I once found a ladybug in my room in the middle of winter. I tried to look up if I could feed it somehow and found countless other people asking the same question. The world is full of people who have compassion enough to feed a lone bug in the winter. All of the cardigans Mr. Rogers wore on camera were knit by his mother. Pollen that bees collect on their legs as they pollinate flowers are called pollinator pants. So next time you see bees hard at work, take a look at their legs. You might be able to see the pants depending on how much they've pollinated. Zebras rest with their heads on each other's backs so they can literally watch their zebra buddies back. Plus it looks like a zebra hug. I love how most of these answers are about animals. Parrots, specifically cockles, will raise their wings when they see something they love. When looking from behind, their raised wings resemble a heart. Heading animals lowers cortisol. Most seahorses are monogamous and mate for life. Young seahorses actually go on dates with their prospective partner before settling and starting to procreate. They can also be seen swimming in pairs with other their tails linked together. Online daters. What are some of the most unattractive stuff people put in their bios? I once read a profile that said, for all those of you who have been saying, I've been on here a long time, you should know I've had three kids in that time. Ew. Don't waste my time. I don't even know why I'm here. Bro, you made this account. This long laundry list of requirements and a partner with no mention of what they're going to be bringing to the relationship. My personal favorite is when you come across multiple profiles with the same profile pic. They are all in different locations. And wizards. Their only photo is a group photo with no indication of which one they are. This isn't the worst thing in the world. Something I'm always bewildered by. Some variation of, hi, I'm back again. Hopefully this time it will work out. This isn't conventional social media with followers. Don't be boring. Just ask. I'm in an open marriage, but my wife doesn't know. Okay. Gross. Yeah. Banned from all the other dating sites, so this is my only hope. Only seen that once, but wow. Follow me on Instagram and message me there because I'm hardly on here. That screams I want more followers and don't take dating seriously. If you were more serious, you'd be more active online. I'm only here because my friends made me make an account. Fluent in sarcasm. Drama queen. How have you lived this long and not figured out that's a bad thing? What unimpressive things are people idiotically proud of? Missing breaks at work for a company that wouldn't care if they died the next day. How much money their parents make. Not eating any vegetables. Known a few people stated as if it's some kind of of achievement giving themselves constipation. Drinking a lot. I once had a coworker brag about how dark his pee is. Ugh. I'm an alpha. Sure thing, big guy. You're so alpha you had to get a shirt that said it too? Saying shit like, in a land of sheep, I am the wolf. Sure thing, dude. Not being able to cook. I keep hearing a pe bragging about how the only thing they can do is boil water. Oh, boiling water is kind of
kind of hard. You have to turn the dial on the stove, and then you have to water in a pot, and then the pot on the stove. Wow, hard. When they say, that's just how I am. Especially when it could hurt themselves or others. Someone once bragged me, like thumbs in suspenders level bragging, his new girlfriend's dad owned a used car lot, and he got an awesome interest rate on his new, to him, truck. His rate was 24%. Oh my god. What's a weird smell you're willing to admit you like? I remember liking the smell of Disney VHS cases. I don't know if this counts. Where I used to live is very common to hug people all the time, and I've been in someone's home before. The place would have a particular smell, and almost every time I would hug them. They would smell like their home. It always felt good to make that association. It was comforting somehow. Machine lubricating oil. Okay. My dad was a machinist. He had this smell on his work clothes. I miss my dad. The smell of brand new tech gadgets. It smells technology. Whenever I buy a new mouse or keyboard, it is a especially true for Logitech products. I don't know if that's a general thing. I sniff them as long as I can detect that sweet, plasticky, ultra-clean smelling goodness. Whiteboard markers and single-use lenses wipes. Honestly, anything chemical smelling. Ah, back in the old days, the smell of papers that the teacher handed out that were fresh off those old hand-cranked mimograph machines? The solvent. Mmm. Water coming out of a garden hose. The combination of polyurethane and the metallic ozonus of the water is heaven. PVC pool toys when you're unfolding them before you blow them up. That clean laundry smell from external dryer vents. I love the smell of basement, which I don't know if it's weird, but I'm the only one I know who likes it. That smell when you walk into a hotel with a pool. Oh, yeah. The smoke fireworks leave behind. One of my favorite smells. What's an incredibly American thing Americans don't realize is American? I used to work in a call center that took calls from Americans and Canadians. I'd ask, where are you from, Canada or the U.S.? Canadians would say, Canada, and Americans would say, Texas or New York. Never ever, they reply with their country name. Eternities and sororities. drive through ATMs and everything else. I didn't learn we had drive through through liquor stores until later in my life, not including tax on prices displayed in stores. Ranch. I never knew ranch was just an American thing until recently. Not having to ask for the bill. Root beer. Prescription drug commercials. Really? That's not a that's, a... that's only an American thing? Handing your credit card to a stranger, having them walk away, swipe it, then bring it back like they didn't just put a down payment on a new house with it. Mixing three different canned foods together and calling it a casserole. Sending Christmas cards with their family photo on it. What are some unmanly things that are actually very manly? Fathering. Gardening. I've also been called a homosexual by multiple other guys for saying I like gardening. I love growing flowers, sewing, cooking, baking, and other activities that are viewed by some as girly activities. I also love traditionally manly things like fishing, building furniture, mowing my lawn, etc. A long time ago, I was upset by some of my friends ribbing me for liking to do girly things. My dad handled this by teaching me that the manliest thing a man can do is whatever the hell he wants. Sewing. When you're stuck on a boat in the Pacific during World War II, you better know how to stitch up your own uniform. Source. Both my grandfathers. Wearing sunscreen. Nothing looks dumber than a guy who's afraid to seem girly that he gets turned into a lobster. It becomes manly when a man does it. Realizing you're wrong. Learning from it and becoming better because of it. When my dad was a kid, Bully told him to meet him after school for a beating. Dad simply never showed up and went directly home instead. That's fucking based. I heard cooking for your family labeled as unmanly due to men wearing an apron around a gas stove by the same people who grill for their family while wearing an apron around a gas grill. Hygiene and cleanliness. I live on my own and I love having a clean and neat house. Going to the doctor. What TV show was amazing at first, but became unwatchable for you later on? The Walking Dead. I watched every episode of Glee when it came out and was slightly obsessed with the show. But as soon as it finished, it all crumbled. The show makes no sense, is not good, and I could never rewatch it. Heroes. Biggest drop in quality after season one. Happy days. Once Fonzie jumped the shark while water skiing wearing his jacket, the show just got progressively worse. P.S. I know. Blacklist. So many loopholes and a never-ending plot. I mean, the female hero, forgot her name, was wanted and had her pictures broadcast nationwide live, but a couple of weeks after, she can do undercover work. Arrow. It's what happens when you try to make so many seasons for a show meant for only a few. Castle. By the end of filming, the two main leads hated each other, and you can tell they had to come up with wacky storylines to keep them apart. Once upon a time, the first three seasons were good, and then after that, they just kept getting worse. Weeds. A hilarious and intriguing show that slowly grew to be about a bunch of unlikable assholes making bad, selfish decisions. When there's no one with any redeeming characteristics, there's no one for the audience to get behind. Not the worst offender, but that 70s show tanked pretty hard once Eric left. He was sorely needed to make the chemistry of group work. What would be the worst message to receive from space? Hey, we're humans too. How y'all looking on oil and water? One short story I read a long time ago was that Earth received a message it took years to decode. Turns out it was a distress signal. Then suddenly Earth started receiving distress signals from everywhere. Then it just all went silent. I remember when I was trying to get into the SCP Foundation. I read an article that described the Foundation receiving an encoded message from space. After they decided ciphered it and turned out to be a video of an alien suspended in the air, screaming and writhing in pain. Nothing was observed to be inflicting pain on it, but it screamed at regular intervals. 
So something like that, I guess. A timer. Oh god. We hope this reaches you before they do. Don't remember where it's from, but there's a book or something where humans start getting messages from everywhere that are goodbyes from other species as the universe ends. You have 30 days to move your earth. A neighbor once tried sending me a message by attempting to put a brick through my window. So I'd say an asteroid. We pick up a signal from space. It is obviously artificial, but humanity can't understand it. But earth insects can, and they begin to respond. What A-list actor actually can't act? Will Smith just plays himself in everything. Don't kill me, but Keanu Reeves. Agreed. His line delivery is so monotone and sounds like he's in eighth grade and having to read out loud. Okay, calm down, everyone. He's doing his best, all right? Michael Sarah. Is he A-list? I don't know if Michael Sarah is really considered A-list. Nicole Kidman. Her accents are horrible. Okay, but have you seen her in the AMC theater ads? It's, ugh, legend. Jack Black. Once again, is he A-list? I don't know what this list is. Blake Lively. A-list. I, yeah, I, what does that mean? <laughs> what is a fact that you think barely anyone else knows? Raindrops don't fall in the drip shape popularly conveyed. They fall in the shape of tiny parachutes or hamburger buns. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs just took on a whole new dimension. Moths will fly in straight lines when they fart. Okay, they're not special. I do it too. Gary Newman was born two weeks before Gary Oldman. Your nipples are older than your teeth. Just say I have grandpa titties if that's what you really want to say. A three-legged donkey is legit called a wonky. That sounds like the most apt naming in all of names. What is one recurring dream you have? I see another version of myself. They smile, a creepy smile, and stalk me. Eventually, they get into my home and tackle me and choke me. Yikes. Yeah, I'll say, geez. I'm the size of a titan. Each segment of my fingers is the length of the Empire State Building. I'm trying to pick a flower without crushing it. Oh, that's kind of sweet, but still a weird scenario. I'm not sure. I always forget it when I wake up. That's why you always need to keep a dream journal on you. It helps you keep your brain big. <laughs> a dream where I see myself standing in sort of sun god robes on a pyramid with a thousand naked women screaming and throwing little pickles at me. It's because you have a small thing, huh? They're throwing little little pickles at you because you got a little one, huh? That's mean. <laughs> that I have a mouth filled with bubble gum and it's all stuck to the roof of my mouth so I can't speak and I have trouble breathing. I always try to pull large hunks out but it doesn't make a difference. I'm pretty sure that means you're like sleeping face down on your pillow because you are suffocating in real life. Your username is a new religion. What are you worshipping? The mystery 4321 said, we don't even know. I don't know 25. I don't know either. Huh? What? Huh? What? I don't know. I don't care. I raise you. I also don't care. Maybe one day if they all get together, they'll they'll figure out what they're worshipping. But not today. I'm not a human for, said. Definitely not humans. Would be weird if you did. Sloth of Doom. It's a doomsday cult. And Einstein? Doomsday comes slowly. Oh, I get it, because the first guy's name is Sloth of Doom. Uh, okay, I get it. You can stop yelling at me. I, I know. I, under I understand the joke. Highland Cows 75 said, Highland Cows. Makes sense. 75 of them, specifically. My 42 cows request an alliance. Hamburg Ra said, An Egyptian sun god in the shape of a meat patty. Gonna be tough to beat Spaghetti Monster. That one's been around since, you know, the beginning of time or whatever. Floppy Sausage said, All hail the flaccid p if you could make something illegal, what would it be? Playing sirens or car horns on the radio? Ooh, that one tricks me so much and I get so scared. I'm like, don't be mad at me, I didn't do anything. Lying to little kids to make them subscribe to a YouTube channel. Speaking of which, if you subscribe, we'll give you more videos. I like that aspect of Chinese censorship where they ban entire genres of television. In which case, I would blacklist the Kardashians and all the housewives from all media. Don't go dissing the housewives, alright? They might be rich and crazy, but they argue about nothing and it is so funny. Nice try, narc. Being a Karen. We don't really know how to define Karen, so really it's like after the age of 21 or so, you are not allowed to have tantrums ever again in public. What's an insult without saying any swear words? I bet your parents change the subject when their friends ask about you. I don't care what the others say. I think you're great. Ooh, that one is kind of backhanded, huh? You aren't the dumbest person in the world, but you better
better hope they don't die. You seem like the kind of guy that would wash his hands after a shower. You are the human equivalent of a participation trophy. You two-toned, zebra-headed, slime-coated, pimple-farming, paramecium-brained, munching on your own mucus, suffering from Peter Pan envy. You lying, dog-faced pony soldier. Your parents probably microwaved you instead of vaccinating you. What started as a joke but became a legitimate thing? B-movie. Jerry Seinfeld supposedly pitched the idea of a B-movie about bees as a joke, but Steven Spielberg liked it so much that it got greenlit. Chris Crocker, leave Britney alone. Using slang unironically. I started copying teenagers' new slang as a way to make fun of it, then noticed that it slowly slipped into my everyday vocab the more it happens. Lol. Edit. A word. Every teenager I know, including myself, use words ironically until they say it so much it becomes unironic. I accidentally said slay to an old teacher recently. Not my proudest moment. It is scary how that works. I, for the longest time, I thought y'all was the stupidest word, but now I say it almost every day. That time when I told a joke to my parents and they turned it into a whole lecture. The girl from Dr. Phil. How about that? John Cena's invisibility. One second we were just joking about it and now we can't even see him or find him anywhere. John Cena is the modern iteration of Where's Waldo. We'll never be able to find him. Your username will cause the destruction of humanity. How do we stop it? Another dumb person's response was give them calculus problems and then they will self-destruct. I hide in closets says must fill all closets to max storage. If you eliminate all hiding places they can't sneak up and get you. Random dude 9001 said you just need a policeman or any person with lethal force is all. 4am said we only have a few hours. That doesn't tell us how to stop it. That one ginger 21 said all of the gingers will unite and steal everybody's soul. There is no stopping this revolution. You either die or die. You have to remove one body part from your body or else you die. Which are you taking off? My great big honking snout. But imagine the mess when you next get a cold. My nose. Walking into the bathroom after any dad has used it is pretty much death. Nose for sure. I wish I could upvote this twice. I don't know what it is about dads, but they make bathrooms nuclear. I would remove my head and see if that one Italian surgeon can actually pull off ye olde head transplant for real. I can live without my left foot. I second this. When I was in physical therapy, the therapist, who had helped many people like me learn how to walk and use their arms slash hands again, would often talk about what injury they would pick if they had to pick one. Nearly all of them would pick a below the knee amputation on their non-dominant side. Get a prosthesis. Learn how to use it. You're good to go. Man boobs. Then I'll barbecue with my shirt off. Can't get grease on my tits. What show or movie franchise has gone on for too long and just needs to end already? The Simpsons are about 20 years past their prime. It's weird because I never actually hear anyone talking about it. No one says, did you watch the latest Simpsons? Back in the day, I remember people talking about the Simpsons like it was the latest Game of Thrones episode. How is it still running? Keeping up with the Kardashians. That should have ended before it started. Shrek. As there is a fifth one in the making. I'm sorry, but the films just went further and further downhill after the second one. Weird fact, I, when I bought my 4K TV, the first movie I watched on it was Shrek 2. And it does hold up. Minions. Let it go. No, that was from Frozen, silly. The Fast and the Furious. I don't care about the franchise, but it went from illegal street racing to spy shit or something, etc. Also, driving on ice? What the f***? Jurassic World. I can't stand Chris Pratt hand-controlling dinosaurs. What myths about Australia and its citizens do or have you believed? Did I just have a stroke? Does that make sense? I still strongly believe that every Australian carries a boomerang and a jar of Vegemite with them everywhere they go. Fun fact, Australia's biggest export are boomerangs. They're also Australia's biggest import. Drop bears. They're no myth, and you'd better watch out. They go for the doubters first. That Australian hospital keep having to shoo dingoes away from the nursery. I thought there would be loud, drunken, mullet and southern cross tattoo dudes in footy shirts everywhere you look in Melbourne. Melbourne. Sorry. Most people down there call their currency dollary dues. Which series do you watch over and over again? Rick and Morty. I initially held off on watching it because I hated the fan base, but I started watching it when COVID started and got more into it when I lived by myself with nothing
nothing better to do. It's now my comfort show. The Office. Hands down. I have been in a rabbit hole of getting Office clips on my recommended, and I, I kind of hate it, but I do like the show. The Simpsons Season 2 to Season 10. Oh, classic seasons. Great material. Oh, God. Oh. The correct answer is Futurama. It definitely falls off in the later seasons, but it's such good TV. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Finished it, like, for the 10th time yesterday. What's a myth that people treat as a fact? Bulls get angry when they see the color red. That is true. They're colorblind, so it doesn't matter what color the flag is. It's the movement that triggers them. Triggered snowflake. <laughs> that if you drop a penny from the Empire State, it can kill a person. Is that a myth? I, th I feel like, well, it's not like they're going to go test that. That you need a gun to protect yourself. I tweeted this recently, but I think we need to get the honor back into battle. We need blades. We need swords and knives. They're cooler and you, you got to have skill to use it. That your blood is blue until exposed to oxygen. It's actually purple. Don't believe me? Put a finger in your... Anyways. That you have to wait 30 minutes to get into a pool after you've eaten something. I can 100% guarantee that is a myth. I have been a competitive swimmer for 10 plus years and have eaten a donut, pizza, and a bottle of Mountain Dew right before a race and have gotten nothing but a faster time from it. The majority of people on my team and I eat seconds before practice and are completely fine. It's just a myth, people. It's just a myth. If you could wish for one thing to be with Invented, what would it be? Alright, I, I don't know if I'm having a stroke or if these people just can't write correctly. A machine that creates food from water. I think we'll get spray on shoes before that. Now you see if that one went over your head, they're talking about, uh, Morbius. <laughs> I want a personal memory eraser. That would be pretty useful and highly marketable, I'd imagine. A computer program where you take images off the internet and then you can automatically have those images replace any game character, actress, actor, singer, or anyone and anything. It also uses an audio program to change the voices. I would love for the totally affordable ability to create androids, if not organic beings themselves, that can be made to the exact specifications that one wants and can function just as normally as, or better than, a current human. Never be lonely. Okay, buddy, I get it. You want a sex doll that can talk to you, but you can't go online and say that. Complete virtual reality. The kind you plug your brain into. I'd never unplug myself. Wouldn't even care about my body wasting away. Did we learn nothing from Sword Art Online? I mean, like, it seems like it's kind of a bad thing, but it does sound super cool and I want it. Teleportation. I don't want to fly overseas. It's a f***ing ripoff. What is the worst possible combination of anything? Wasps and genitals. My everything hurts from reading this. Chocolate and fish. If you do this, you are going to hell. Mayonnaise and ice cream. Oh, don't knock it till you try it. Go dump a whole bottle of mayo into a thing of vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Put it back and see what happens. One time I mixed Pepsi and milk in the hopes of creating the next big drink, but I was way off. Oh, you're talking about pilk? I love me some pilk. Give me a big old warm glass of pilk. Stupid opinions and undeniable charisma. What is a fact that you think barely anyone else knows? Boanthropy is a psychological disorder in which a person believes they are a cow and try to live their life as one. Medical explanations suggest late stage syphilis as one of the causes? Cool. Like very specifically a cow or can it be any animal? The middle name of Michael J. Fox is Andrew. Ah uh, yes, Jandrew. Chimpanzees are the only animals in the zoo that are marked kill on sight if they escape. They don't even have that for the lions, tigers, or bears. Oh my. The phrase, it's raining cats and dogs, comes from the era of thatched roofs. In the heat of the day, the dogs and cats would climb into the thatch to stay cool. If it rained particularly hard, it would make the straw slippery and they would slide out. The phrase specifically refers to very hard rain, hard enough to permeate the top layers and unseat the animals. Which TV series is an absolute 10 out of 10 for you? The Joy of Painting with Bob Ross is a delight and there was not a single bad episode. Not gonna lie, Stranger Things. Each season is an absolute banger. I'll stand by that season one is amazing TV. The rest for me kind of meh. And now I'll await all of the Stranger Things stands to attack me on Twitter. I think we can all agree on Breaking Bad. I would also say Game of Thrones. If the last two seasons didn't exist, how it's made. Upvote for learning. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. With rumors of another spinoff after BCS wraps up, what would it be? A sequel series where Jesse Pinkman and tries to have a normal life just to have demons of the past come back when Brock, Andrea's son, gets involved with the cartel. Ah, uh, yeah, that's interesting, but
but it, they should just like let it stop at this point, right? Dexter loved the humor. The last episode completely torpedoes the rest of the show, though. If the UK was a food, what would it taste like? Gross. Yucky. <laughs> I'm kidding. Vinegar. Vinegar? Tea, for sure. Yes. Beige. Every British food is boring because they don't know how to use spices. Soggy biscuit. Not sure if you're talking about the actual food or the... Never mind. Fish and chips from a street cart that hasn't changed the oil this century. Salt and vinegar. They conquered half the world for spices but have the most boring, bland food in the world. This is now people roasting the British. As they deserve. I'm joking. I, I don't know many British people. <laughs> if the USA had a flavor, what would it be? Like sodium and grease? Whatever it is, it'll have far too much sugar in it. The more you chew, the more flavors you uncover. There's a total of 50 different flavors. How it feels to chew 50 gum. I'm gonna be nice and say barbecue. Hot dog flavored water. Oh, that yeah, that's just a regular snack us Americans drink. You just get a big old cup of hot dog water and slurp it on down. Like the weird sandwich that I bought today at a grocery store. Starts out weird, but you kind of like it, and then the longer you chew, the worse it becomes until all you have to swallow is disappointment and regret over losing money over this piece of sh used to be something great, like a perfectly grilled steak or burger. Now it's more like orange chocolate? What type of people are you scared of? Don't tell Robin this, but I'm terrified of that dude. He is massively tall and weird. <laughs> people with a short temper. What the f*** does that mean? People who text with their pointer fingers and people who sleep in jeans. Jean sleeping is not a choice. It is, uh, it arises due to circumstance. Everyone who shows their interest in me. Aw, don't beat yourself up like that. Don't hate that. They like you. An idiot in a position of authority. Police, bosses, professors, military leaders. This. The stupid are far more dangerous than the evil. Gingers. My sibling is a ginger. I have personal experience with the horrors of gingers. Take care of yourselves out there. I've only dated two redheads in my life. Married both of them. Sequentially. Not simultaneously. No rag or er, girts. Confirm. The color of our hair is meant to be a warning and should be treated as such. I never really understood understood where all this hate for redheaded people is. Like, if you've got red hair, you're you're kind of a cutie. What's the tastiest sandwich? Just a good old grilled cheese. Give me some butter, some toast, and some aged cheddar. I totally agree with you. Grilled cheese is the greatest of all, especially paired with tomato soup. Oh, it's, uh, oh my god. The one my wife makes. Yeah, it's pretty good. Ooh, we got you. If anyone says egg salad, I respect your opinion. Thank god nobody said egg salad. Salad. A fried bologna and over easy egg sandwich with brown mustard and shredded cheese melted to the bread. Some call it a struggle meal, but I think it's the most slept on sandwich of all time. A knuckle sandwich. Come here, punk. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does your dad always say? When I was your age. When I was your age, we weren't little kids running around, chat snapping and instant gramming each other. I walked to school uphill both ways, butt naked in the snow in the desert. Desert. Get off my lawn! <laughs> I don't know, but it always feels very loud. Once when I was 16, I was eating breakfast and my dad walks in the kitchen and says, nice guys finish last. And I said, Jesus was a nice guy. And he said, look what happened to him. He do kind of got a point though, if I gotta be honest. Right on. Not really sure why or what it means. Pain is a good teacher. So your dad's admitting that he's not a good teacher. If you had 24 hours to use infinite money, how would you use it? I would buy Lego. At today's prices, infinite money may May not be enough. Are you talking about buying the company or just buying a Lego set? I'd buy everything so the 25th hour I can chill and enjoy life. Boo, that's an easy answer. I would give it to the poor, then buy myself some dumb stuff. Purchase all the NFTs and destroy them. Take the blockchain down from the inside. Also, never buy NFTs. It's a scam. Please don't do that. Buy Elon to be my servant. Buy a house and kidnap Jeff Bezos. If you could choose a video game to live in, what would it be? and why. Grand Theft Auto. You don't have to work. Just go around and steal stuff. Wasted. Vice City specifically. I'd just be out on the beach all day listening to the radio, which was exclusively
incredibly awesome music in 1986. I don't know. Minecraft would be nice. Easy to stay safe. Easy to keep yourself fed. And if you get bored of an agrarian lifestyle, you can go kill a dragon. Any of the Pokemon games. I've loved the series since forever, and I always come back to the fantasy of traveling around with a gang of Pokemon buds. Bloodborne. You literally cannot permanently die, and if you get bored of werewolf hunting, you can become a god ruling over a dream world, or awake from the dream and live a normal life. But if you wake from the dream, you're still in the UK, so like, it's still really bad. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm sorry, it's... <laughs> I'm sorry. Star Citizen would be the safest bet out of the games I play. Set in the future, smallest amount of conflict, no wars. Until you get some griefers running around and then you're, you're ruined. What is the one thing you really want back in this world? The innocence of childhood. Ow, that, that one hurt. Cheap gas. Owie, stop, you're hurting me. The original Scooby-Doo fruit snacks. Hmm, why did they have to change them? They were so good. My goddamn foreskin. I propose a trade. Don't do it, he's just trying to collect. I want the idiom, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Back in this world and believed. Jesus, come on, I'm ready for the judgment day. Ha! <laughs> I don't know how to laugh in Jewish, sorry, that was... What's a song that you really liked, but somehow forgot existed for a while, and when you randomly heard it again years later, it was amazing? Float On by Modest Mouse. Oh, that song shoots me back to, like, playing Guitar Hero years ago, or maybe it was Rock Band, I don't remember, but it's, uh, still a banger. Pretty much Enya's entire discography. Robin, did you type this one? Hide and Seek by Emojin Heat. I've never understood how to say your name, and I'm not gonna try again. Every early 2000s song. Remember by Ember. I'm not kidding. I used to be obsessed with this song in grades 5 through 7. Then I forgot about it for four years. I heard it on TikTok just a few days ago by accident, and I love it again. What opinion do you have that stirs up a conflict? Stranger Things is overrated. Like I said earlier, season 1 is great, the rest are meh. Good fries are ruined by ketchup. Ketchup is for <laughs> fries. Sorry, but you're wrong. Cereal first or milk first? It's cereal. You put the cereal in because then you know how much cereal you're eating. There's no such thing as a funny meme. Oh my god, they got two downvotes? Ooh. I'm ready for school to start back up. Yes, I'm one of those kids who likes school. Not to be with friends, to learn. Okay, nerd. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to want. What do you want? I want my boss to be abducted by aliens and never seen again. You know that movie trope where someone is too depressed to take care of themselves, so someone makes makes them a bath and washes their hair and then brushes it for them and tucks them into bed? That. Edit. I'm so sorry this resonated with so many of you. Whoever you are, whatever your story is, I'm glad you're still here. We've got this, dude. We've got this. Nothing. Sorry I bothered you. Man, the comment section is depressing, but I resognate with so many of these.